Is there a uh, screen in your brain? This picture was drawn by uh, Ernst Mach, representing the view from his left eyeball. As you can see, he represents his visual field as being like completely complete in all regards. It's kind of like a little camera that's pointing out there at the world, and inside his brain there's like a screen in his brain which has all the details there. Um, hi, hi, Mendham. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, some recent ideas in uh, philosophy of mind uh, and in the, the scientific study of mind, which talk about your point of, you know, like a little screen in your mind that's there, you know, where everything is like kind of thrown onto the screen and then you, you react to that screen. Um, yeah, this book, uh, I, I recommend this book to you, Action in Perception by uh, Professor No. Um, the... You know, recent research has shown that um, it's not really that way. Okay, you can try a little, uh, like a little experiment now. You know, let's just focus on the visual field for for the present. Um, you know, it seems like if you're looking out the world, it seems like you know everything is there, right? I mean, it's, it's like it doesn't seem incomplete in any way. Um, of course, we know it's it's somewhat incomplete, right? Because we have blind spots, but we don't see like you know little patches of nothingness where our blind spots are, right? It looks like a complete uh, visual field for us. But it's not really that. It's not really that way. Okay, I, I invite you to try this experiment. Okay, take uh, two objects of different colors. Okay, I've got uh, two inhalers here. One of them's flaming red, and one of them's white. And and have a friend. Okay, you look straight ahead. You know, have a friend uh, bring it in from the side until you can just barely see it in your peripheral vision. Right. Um, you won't be able to tell, okay, if you're doing it right. You won't be able to tell whether they're bringing the red one in or the white one in. Um, and the reason is because the, uh, the uh, nerves on your retina, uh, the photoreceptors on your retina, uh, around the, your peripheral vision, uh, don't contain many color-sensing uh, cells. All your color-sensing cells are, are, are uh, focused in the, middle of your, uh, in the middle of your retina. So, you know... They'll hold it up here. You'll be able to see the shape of it. You might even be able to recognize what it is, but you won't be able to tell what what color it is. It's a very amazing. Uh, it's a very amazing thing. Okay. Um, and yet, okay, if we look look out at the world, right? It's not like there's like you know this colored part in the middle, and then there's this black and white part around the outside in our peripheral vision. No, I mean we don't we don't perceive the world like that at all, right? We perceive the world as being colored all the way around. Uh, so why is this? You know. Um, you know, it's, when it's, it's just manifestly not that way. I mean, you bring it in, and you just won't be able to see the color of it. Um, um, in, the, in, this, in this book, uh, Professor Noe, uh, he uh, describes a, uh, a, a theory about this. He says, like, you know, it looks like everything in, in the visual field is there for us. I mean, we get this impression that everything in the visual field is, is there for us, and our visual field is completely complete. Because it's kind of like uh, the same illusion that we have that the entire World Wide Web is on our desktop, right? I mean, the entire World Wide Web is not on our desktop. It's stored in servers all around the world. But, you know, by clicking on the links, we can, we can get there. It pulls, it pulls it in in real time, right? So that's kind of how, like, how our visual field is. Uh, there's this potential there that we can, like, gaze at something, you know, click on that link, as it were, and then pull in that, pull in that part of the world. But... Um, you know, in reality, it's not that way. Just the same way that it's in reality, it's, it's not that um, you know the entire World Wide Web is just sitting on our on our local computer. So our subjective experience uh, like this is is really largely largely an illusion. Um, is is what we're what we're learning. Um, you know, this Cartesian idea of you know there's a little guy in there watching a television screen inside the mind. I mean, you know, first of all, just from infinite regress reasons, it. It doesn't make much sense, right? So, you know, you know, you haven't solved the problem. Just like, you know, by positing a god that creates the universe, you know, well, who created God? Same thing, you know, positing a little TV screen in your brain that somebody's looking at. Well, it's like, you know, well, how does that somebody who's looking at the the, the TV screen? How, how do they they re respond to it, right? So you can just skip that step entirely, right? We we just respond directly to the to the external stimuli. It's not a uh, it's not like there's there's some mental representation in our brain or some construction of what's going on. That that all really is an illusion. Um, you know, the more and more we learn about this, I, I think we can summarize it in, in two slogans, right? You know, objectivity is dead, and subjectivity is dead. 
Uh, of course, my preferred, you know, stance now that I'm taking is an intersubjective stance. So, you know, these two things are dead, so long live intersubjectivity.